My name is Dan Quinn. I'm a PhD student at the University of Kentucky. Um, behind me is some of my research uh, projects I've been working on the last three years. Um, and the main prem premise for these research projects is understanding how do we manage corn following a rye cover crop. So farmers in Kentucky like using rye cover crops. There's a lot of interest in using rye cover crops because it helps conserve the soil, prevent soil erosion, can help with weeds, um, and also can help reduce um, a lot of the nitrate, soil nitrate levels in their soil. Um, but when it comes to using rye, a lot of farmers have also seen issues with that rye cover crop. And one of those main issues is yield loss in their corn and when it follows rye. And one of those main reasons why we're seeing those yield reductions is because we're seeing reduced emergence. So that corn is having a tougher time to get through that biomass. Um, we're also seeing increased disease levels, also nitrogen issues early on in that corn crop that result in those reduced yield um, in the corn when it is specifically following rye. So behind me we have one of our studies, um, one of three studies that we have across the state. In this study we specifically wanted to look at one, when we terminate our rye. So terminating that rye, uh, chemically terminating it with Roundup at about 14 to 21 days before corn planting. And two, moving to where we plant straight into that rye cover crop. So waiting till that rye is green, it's about as tall up into my chin, it's fully headed out, um, and planting directly into that rye and actually terminating that rye directly after that corn has been planted. And also with these, with these plots, we also have in furrow starter treatments as well. So we're looking at different starter treatments applied through that planter um, in furrow on the seed. So we have fertilizer, so a 1034-0 fertilizer, and also fungicide as well. So what I want to highlight first behind me is this corn right here was planted directly into that green rye cover crop. So if you look below me here, um, you can see still heavy amounts of biomass on that soil surface from where that that really tall rye uh, was planted. But one thing we want to point out with this corn specifically is if you look in this corn canopy here, you can see that corn is actually beginning to dry a lot sooner than corn uh, to my left or to your right. Um, so that corn, when it was planted in that heavy rye biomass residue, it had to, early on in the season, it grew much quicker, it grew it was often about a growth stage ahead of the corn that was planted not following rye cover crop. And that's due to early on in that corn just trying to find light um, and trying to grow quickly through that heavy biomass. So that corn throughout this season was about a growth stage ahead. And you can see that pretty clearly here with that corn that was planted in that heavy rye residue. Is seeing, you're seeing um, increased maturity. That corn is drying down a lot quicker um, compared to that corn um, on my left here that was planted not following a rye cover crop at all. So also within this study we also have rye that was terminated about 14 to 21 days prior to corn planting. That's generally what is recommended in the state of Kentucky. So if you look here on my left um, at this rye residue, this is rye that was terminated about that 14 to 21 days prior to corn planting. So you got significantly less biomass than you would where we planted into the green cover crop. But what we're actually seeing with this research is that when we wait that 14 to 21 days, we aren't seeing that reduced emergence in the corn crop. We're also seeing less root disease in these plants um, and less re yield reductions as well. So you can kind of get the benefits of that rye cover crop by terminating that rye much earlier, um, about that two to three weeks before you plant corn. So we're not seeing those significant yield reductions that we are seeing in that heavy rye biomass. So with that heavy rye biomass, even though that corn is moving much quicker throughout the season, um, we're seeing significant yield reductions from lost stand. Um, we're also seeing increased insect feeding, um, elevated disease. Um, so that corn just tends to really struggle through that heavy uh, biomass uh, rye cover crop. So this corn here on my right 
is corn that is planted with no cover crop at all. So if you look down to the soil surface, you're not seeing much biomass. Um, this corn was no-tilled, um, so a little bit of residue on the soil. But this corn uh, specifically was planted not following rye cover crop. And really with this study, the last couple of years, um, we're not seeing really any significant differences between the corn here on my right and corn here on my left that was planted with a cover crop, terminated two to three weeks before corn, or corn here on my right without a cover crop. So again, highlighting, if you terminate your rye about two to three weeks before that corn planting, we're just not seeing those significant issues in that corn crop that cause uh, significant yield reductions, like we're seeing um, when you wait till about a day after corn planting, planting into that rye green, um, that's where we really tend to see the issues um, with the corn crop. So I also mentioned um, with this study that we have in furrow starter treatments, so that fertilizer, um, that 103040 0 fertilizer, and that fungicide. So we're looking at them combined together, the fertilizer and the fungicide, uh, fertilizer by itself, fungicide by itself. Um, and what we're seeing really isn't any significant yield benefits or yield reductions from any of those treatments. Um, we're seeing increased corn growth early on, which is generally what you see with those in starter treatments. Um, we're also digging root uh, plants early on in the season to look at root disease, uh, pulling those into the lab and seeing how those in fungicides may impact root disease. Um, we're seeing a little bit less root disease but overall, the last couple of years, we just haven't had enough root disease early on in the season to see a significant benefit from that in furrow fungicide. Um, but overall, um, the corn with or without an in furrow treatment tends to yield about the same. So in addition to showing corn that was um, beginning to dry down a lot quicker in that heavy rye biomass, or that heavy rye residue, I also pulled two ears here. Um, the ear on your left, on my left here, in my left hand, was pulled from that heavy rye biomass corn crops that was planted green into that rye. And here is a corn ear that was pulled where corn wasn't following any rye. Um, and this is, these studies are white corn hybrids. Um, so you ask why white corn hybrids um, in these studies. Um, across Kentucky, white corn is pretty prevalent. A lot of growers grow um, white corn. Also white corn is higher value it's also less stress tolerant than a yellow corn hybrid. Um, so when it comes to pushing corn, uh, looking at stresses rye causes in corn, we want to choose a white, a white hybrid because we want to be able to push that corn stress and really to see those corn stresses specifically when it's following a rye cover crop. Um, so the corn in the ear um, in my right hand was following no cover crop. And it's really hard to see what the white white corn, but that milk line is actually much higher in this ear compared to that corn planted in that heavy rye, by, heavy rye residue. Um, so again, this highlights that that corn is progressing a lot quicker throughout the season. Um, it was about a growth stage ahead throughout the season um, when it was planted into that heavy rye biomass. So in addition to looking at the termination timings of rye and also different in treatments, we also have two other studies um, looking at rye cover crop and across the state of Kentucky. Um, these are highlighted behind me here on the right and the left of me. Uh, the first study, we're looking at different seeding rates and also again those different in uh, fertilizer and fungicide treatments. So a lot of research has been done on rye cover crops, understanding what they do to the soil and what rye cover crops do to the plant. Not a lot of research has been done. We're trying to understand how a farmer needs to manage their corn crop when it is following rye. So that study here on my right, we're looking at different seeding rates ranging from 20,000 seeds per acre all the way up to 44,000 seeds per acre and also those in fertilizer and fungicide treatments. Trying to understand one, what is that optimum seeding rate in corn so that farmers can account for that stand loss and also that yield loss in their corn crop. And two, can these in treatments help with corn emergence? And also this corn planted on my left, we're actually looking at nitrogen um, within corn following a rye cover crop. So we're looking at nitrogen rates from anywhere from zero pounds of nitrogen per acre all the way up to 270 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And also trying to understand when we need to apply our nitrogen when we're following our rye cover crop. Because rye 
really hinders the amount of nitrogen corn takes up early on in the season? Do we need to apply all of our nitrogen up front or immediately after planting? Or do we need to wait? So rye can also immobilize a lot of nitrogen early on in the season. Do we need to wait until that immobilization um, tends to ramp down? Wait until we apply that nitrogen so we can that corn can then um, uptake more of that nitrogen. So the corn planted on my left, um, no, it's not because we don't know how to grow corn. Um, this is actually a zero nitrogen plot, so zero pounds of nitrogen per acre were applied on this plot. Um, again, highlights that need for nitrogen fertilizer during the season. Um, so you can see that corn is significantly shorter, it's yellow, um, the ears are significantly smaller, and we'll see yield reductions upwards of 100 to 150 bushels per acre when we don't apply nitrogen. But we wanted to understand, okay, what does corn yield at that zero pounds of nitrogen per acre? So we can plot all the way up to that 270 pounds of nitrogen per acre to give us a pretty good idea of what the exact nitrogen is, nitrogen rate is required by that corn crop to maximize yield, whether it be without a rye cover crop or with a rye cover crop.